Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. You brave the parking, you brave the rain, and you are here for a spectacular program. Thank you so much for coming. I'm Cindy Kohara, co-anchor of the CBS 5 Eyewitness News Early Edition, and I am so proud to serve as your MC for today's events. And, you know, I was wondering when they asked me, um, they didn't have Google back then, they didn't have YouTube, and thank goodness for that, because I remember meeting Fred uh, back in the mid-90s. It was a New Year's Eve party at Garrick Blue's house, and there are a number of distinguished guests in this audience who were there, and like I said, YouTube wasn't invented, and we are so happy because we probably wouldn't have our jobs. It was a wonderful uh, New Year's party. Who strolls in but Fred and Catherine Korematsu to this New Year's party? Now, you know, can imagine by about 10 or 11 o'clock, uh, it was a rock and rolling party. There were uh, a few alcoholic beverages. Um, I remember something with a gourd from somebody's kitchen or a squash, I don't know, but anyway, it made some pictures somewhere out there. And then the music started. And boy, could Fred Korematsu dance. <laughs> His family knows he loved to dance. And I remember Catherine getting up and dancing a few. Fred never left the dance floor. And I was up there for most of them, but by New Year's, one o'clock, I think by about 1.30, I had to leave. And who was the person I saw still on the dance floor? Fred Korematsu. And I think he was probably in his early 80s then. So, Fred, that man can dance. We are going to dance and we are going to celebrate today because today, January 30th, 2011, is the first Fred Korematsu Day in the state of California, the first day in U.S. history to be named after an Asian American. Don't you know Fred is dancing up there? On behalf of the steering committee and staff of the Korematsu Institute at the Asian Law Caucus, I would like to thank you for joining us for this historic first Fred Korematsu Day celebration. I want to begin the program this afternoon by recognizing a number of special guests who have graciously taken their time to be with us this afternoon. Consul General Hiroshi Inamata of the Japanese Consulate in San Francisco. And if you will hold your applause, I want all of these dignitaries to stand because these are people who believe believed in Fred Korematsu and believe what is happening today. We have the Consul General. We have U.S. Magistrate Judge for the Northern District of California, Mr. Ed Chin. <laughs> California Board of Equalization member, Betty Yee. State Senator, Ellen Corbett. Assembly member, Warren Furutani. <laughs> Assembly member, Nancy Skinner. Oakland Mayor, Jean Kwan, the first Asian American mayor of Oakland. And the first Asian American mayor of San Francisco, Ed Lee. <laughs> Superior Court Judge of Alameda County, Dennis Hayashi. San Francisco Superior Court Judge Michael Becker. San Francisco Supervisor Ed Marr, excuse me, Eric Marr, excuse me. Berkeley City Council Member Jesse Aragon. San Leandro Unified School District Superintendent Cindy Cathy. And San Leandro School Board of Education member Mike Katz Lakabe. <laughs> and Assembly member Mariko Yamada. A warm round of applause for all of our dignitaries. Thank you. Thank you so much for coming today. I'd now like to introduce Assemblymember Marty Block of San Diego, who was one of the co-sponsors of the Fred Korematsu Day Bill, which moved along the education track during the legislative process. He's here to share the story of how the Fred Korematsu
Korematsu Day concept became a reality. Please welcome Assemblymember Marty Block. Hey, thank you all. It is so great to be here, along with my colleagues from the Assembly, the Legislature, the Senate. Um, it's not often we come into a room and have people thank us. Um, <laughs> Given the budget, and we're going to hear from the governor and his state of the state tomorrow night, I think it's going to be a long time until we speak for a happy audience again. So we'll, we'll make the most of it. Um, my job is to talk a little bit along with the Senate member Furitani about the making of the law, not, not the meaning of the law. That will come later. But it's difficult to separate the two. Let me just say that we start every assembly session with the Pledge of Allegiance. And as you all know, the Pledge of Allegiance ends with the phrase, with liberty and justice for all. Well, unfortunately, we all know there was a period in our country, many periods in our country, unfortunately, where there was not liberty and justice for all. And this day, and Fred's experience, and the experience of Japanese Americans throughout the country, particularly in the West, um, set an example for how we should not act as Americans. Uh, I'm a Jewish American. During the time of the Japanese internment in this country, I had relatives in Germany and Poland who were in other camps. And while the horrors may have been different, the horror that had happened in this country is absolutely repulsive to me as an American. And it's important, just as folks not forget the concentration camps of Germany, it's important people never forget, never forget the internment that occurred in this country. And that's what this day is all about. It's about Fred Korematsu, it's also about, in general, the importance of civil liberties in the Constitution. And when a group of San Diegans came to me, and this, this effort gained a lot of momentum in San Diego, many of you know that, for, for probably 20, 25 years in San Diego, there were a group of people who pushed for a Korematsu day. Judge Lillian Lim, Susan Wu, a physician named uh, Mitz Tomato, um, they came to my office and they said, Marty, you know, we've been trying over and over again. We need an assembly member, a legislator, to stand up and, and author a bill honoring Mr. Karmatsu and, and honoring what he stood for. And I said, I've been a teacher. My, my background was a social studies teacher in junior high school uh, for years before I made it to San Diego State University where I worked for 20 plus years as a professor and then the assembly. And, and my passion is education. And we can't change the past always, but we can prevent the past from being repeated by teaching our children and their children. So, <laughs> so I went to my good friend in the assembly, Warren Furitani, and Warren's family had been involved in these efforts over the years. And he'll be up here in just a minute or two to tell you more about how, how the bill progressed through the legislature from the point that Warren became involved and authored the legislation and did a wonderful job of, of advocating for the legislation as it went through the Assembly and the Senate. And Senator Corbett and others who were here with us advocated in that other house. Um, so that we, we really never ran into obstacles. Once we got the bill rolling, in this day and age, finally, people understand that this is the right time, that frankly, it's way past the right time for a day honoring Fred and honoring what he stands for. So let me just conclude by, again, thanking you for allowing me to come and speak with you. But more than that, thanking you for bringing to me an idea, legislation, not everything we do in Sacramento has a great impact on the future and on generations to come. This is something I'm so proud to be a part of because I think it will live way beyond myself, Mr. Furitani, and others in this room. Thank you all.